welcome back. I've been working on this for a couple months and I'm very excited to be sharing it with you today. It's a holster for the Streamlight TLR VIR2. This holster interfaces with the light, not the pistol. So you can put this light on most any pistol and it'll lock into this holster. I modeled it for the Ruger Mark IV 2245 because that's what I'm using it on, but I've tried it on Glocks too and it works fine. You still get good trigger coverage. I haven't tried it with anything other than that, just a disclaimer, so your mileage may vary. But locks in, good and tight. You press the button down, it comes out nice and easy. So the mechanism is very simple. There are only three parts to it. You have your button, which goes down and wedges behind your locking lever, and both of them are pushed back into place by springs. So when you press the button down, the locking lever goes away and it releases your pistol. This locking lever indexes right there on the light, so it will lock in nice and solid. I've been testing this the last few months. I've been going through lots of revisions. I think I'm on 20 or so by now. Uh, and it's been doing pretty well each time a little bit better. I am now printing it in PETG 100% infill. That's the one I've got the best results out of. Still easy to print, but you get some better characteristics out of it. It's not going to absorb moisture and it's not as sensitive to sunlight. This particular one, actually that particular one has been sitting outside of my backyard in the hot, hot summer sun for the last two weeks and it still fits the pistol just fine. Three components that you have to print for the holster. This is it. If you want to, you can print this fourth one. I didn't design the QLS fork, but uh, someone else did. Saved me time. I just downloaded it. It's been working all right for me. I haven't tested this as much as I've tested the holster. I just used a, uh, a stock QLS fork up until now for the most part. But I'm going to give this 3D printed guy a try. And I'll drop a link to this guy's QLS fork also because I think it is pretty cool. Uh, you'll notice on this piece right here, you'll have like a little T-shaped thing on the end. That's just a extra raft that I made so that the end of this wouldn't curl up as you're printing. Just bend it back and forth and break it off. You don't need that. It's supposed to be pointy like this. Drill out all your holes to make sure that they are true to size with a 16 inch drill bit. That's the only drill bit size you're gonna need for this is a 16th. Run the 16th through this hole, this hole, and then this hole. And once you've done that, you're pretty much ready to assemble. So these springs you can find in like high quality ballpoint pens will have this size, or you can just buy some 0.18 inch diameter springs. This was like an inch and a half long spring. I cut it in half and I trimmed the halves to length. So I'm gonna need one that's about 0.6 inches long, and the other is gonna need to be about 0.5 inches long. Once you have your springs cut to size, your 0.6 inch one can go right down inside of here. See that little gap right there? I'm just gonna drop it down the back side. On top of that, I'm gonna take my unlocking button with the angle part pointing out. I'm just gonna push that down in there. As I can see, when I just start to load the spring just a little bit, my window through this hole will open up. And with that depressed just a little bit, I can push one of my pins through. This pin is some 16th inch pin stock, stainless steel. Um, I think I ordered this from some knife making place, or maybe I got it from a welding, welder supply. I don't remember. I'll try to find some length to toss some of the 16th inch pin stock down below. I'd suggest using stainless because it's a little bit more rigid. And obviously, it's not going to rust using that versus brass would be a little bit more durable, I think, because the brass might bend. But moving on, our little tab right here, we're gonna take our shorter spring, the half inch one, and inside of here, you're gonna see a little round hole. Try to stand this spring up inside the hole. It's a little bit tricky. And then that little groove we have on the back of that unlocking tab goes over that spring and it kind of captures the spring. You press this whole locking tab flat down inside there like that. And as you press that in, you can feed another pin through this hole here on the side. Might have to give this one a little bit of a tap. Then having a bit of a punch, 
to finish it off helps. There we go. And that's it, your holster is assembled. Locks in place, releases. Now we gotta mount it to something so you can actually carry it. So I made the whole pattern the same as Safari Land, which Blackhawk and other people have ripped off also. So to use that, you're gonna need to insert some nuts down inside here. I've already made these holes the right size for the number eight, 32 thread per inch uh, machine nuts. So you can order some of those. I'll try to link them below once again. And you just insert those down into there. They recess, they fit pretty snug, and they'll sit in there on their own. That way, you can take whatever belt loop or QLS fork or mount you want, slap on the back, and then screw it in. For your screws, get 8-32 screws. Get them 5 8 of an inch long. Make sure you get the ones with the wide heads. Wide heads specifically, because if you don't, you'll end up with narrow heads like these, which I accidentally bought like 200 of. So don't buy narrow heads, make sure you get the specific wide head ones. I'll try to find a link. If not, you can get them from Safari Land, probably. The holes are a little bit on the tight side. That's kind of a benefit because it's gonna keep your screw from turning while it's in there and loosening up. And that's it. Just a pretty short build for a pretty cool holster. So as always, these files are available for free from the link down below. I'll try to link some parts down below also. If you like this video, if you are gonna go download this, if you're gonna go share the file with your buddies and you want to support the channel, don't worry about it. This is a gift for you guys. Print it off, have some fun with it. Uh, if you wanna show your support, if you wanna give some money to something, find your local Habitat for Humanity, donate some money to them, whatever amount you want, then come back here to my comments and comment that you did so on my behalf. I'd appreciate it, it'd make me happy. So if that's what you feel like doing, that's all I ask. Other than that, like, subscribe, as always. I don't have a tagline, just, there you go.